Okay, if you had one thing to say to other elders and people to know the importance of voting, what would it be? As a marginalized, devalued people, you know, Duluth has been a historical village since probably the start of written history, and it still exists, um, and just surrounded by all those, those uh, buildings. Uh, the resiliency uh, of, our, of our people, you know, uh, are in our collective memory. And unfortunately, being in the business of survival, uh, we've had to we had to really pick the lesser of two evils when it comes to voting, and we haven't necessarily selected or or created a process for those candidates to have our morals and values and come from our community. I think that the resiliency, you know, maybe we're at a point where, where our resiliency is our greatest as aspect that we can offer others. And it's because of the morals and values that, that we still hold. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, characteristics uh, of a people that have survived ongoing genocide. Uh, some of the visible things are addiction, uh, homelessness, uh, uh, foster care, children. Uh, but we also <laughs> lead in the, the, the same ca uh, alter alternate categories of abstinence, uh, uh, taking care of our, our own, and and uh, you know, taking care of our children. So, you know, the visible characteristics uh, kind of make uh, those other characteristics invisible. And for those elders, we have the ability to share our morals and values. Um, a, while, a while back, when there was this place called Big Bucks Bingo, um, I took a summer job there uh, uh, during uh, Fond du Lac uh, Tribal Community College was still downtown here. And when summer was coming to an end and I was going back to, to, to school, uh, I don't man, mind mentioning his name, Franny the Fave. Uh, you know, he, he come and grab me when I was leaving Big Bucks Bingo. And, uh, just wanted to make sure that that I understood that the instructors that were going to be instructing me were going to be implanting their morals and values. And I remember he, he acted really pissed off, so angry, um, <laughs> that I needed to be aware that I needed to, to take my morals and values with me. Uh, whatever I did afterwards. And you know, here here it is twenty years later and I and I and I constantly remind you know reminded to, to remember that. Uh, because uh, you know uh, working for Leech Lake for a number of years and child welfare and the administration, I've seen many young people uh, coming from the institutions that have the morals and values of their instructors. And I don't know if it's because their grandparents, their parents, uh, surviving has devalued uh, what what the generation looks upon as as uh, the morals and values. Uh, but even, even those still resisting with alcoholism or, or drug addiction, they have morals and values somewhere in there, and uh, the devaluing of how we got here should really help us in determining 
uh, candidates that have the morals and values that, that we still retain even though uh, some of us have those undesirable characteristics that we might not need to carry with them anymore. So instead of uh, the candidates, me choosing a candidate that, that looks like it has the morals and values that we can support, uh, I would hope that uh, with dialogues like these and, and others that we're developing those morals and values of our candidates that can withstand the influences of uh, the things that they will have to face as individuals in those elected halls and boards and whatnot. And the re-empowering re of the individuals with our morals and values that quite frankly got each and every one of us here today um, is a highly important because sometimes we forget that we are here. And uh, we still continue to, to uh, occupy those historical villages and, and places. And we're just kind of invisible with all that stuff. Mm. Thank you. So the question was, um, if you had uh, only one thing to say to other elders and people to know the importance of voting, what would it be? Just to remind everybody what it was. <laughs> I was just teasing the other. <laughs> you tend to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Bill. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> one thing to say to other elders and people to know the importance of voting, what would it be? What would you tell Auntie Bond? Let's get ice cream after you vote. All right, good one. <laughs> ice cream after you vote. Yahoo, I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> I would just want to say that I would... Uh, want to thank the relatives and the elders for um, all the things that were said, the time spent in um, passing the wisdom on, and that I was listening, although I might not have acted like it at times. I think it established a, a foundation, and even though I got lost, I returned to that foundation. I want to thank uh, the elders, particularly my father and mother and mother and Edith mm. and my grandparents for um, putting in my ear some important things. We're all moved into the spirit world now, but we still have that gratitude and that love for them. So um, um, you give time you're giving a piece of yourself and I think I'd like to think that by reiterating some of their words that they'll live on. And I just want to tell uh, other elders too to uh, keep fighting for our uh, for, uh, good voice for um, the elders are good voice for us. Um, Whoever's in, uh, being elected, uh, keep fighting for our rights and our, you know, keep it strong for our people. And, you know, we're still struggling as the people. You know, got that strong voice in there. It's acceptable. Tracy? Yeah, I, um, I, I sure as heck don't want that disease that's in there now that's destroying everything in sight. I, I want somebody to get in there and release Leonard Peltier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the 
watching something, and this is just a thought. I was watching some YouTube, and it was about uh, Russell Means giving his speech way back when. And we were still struggling with the same thing. Mm -hmm. What was that back in the 70s? Mm -hmm. yeah. That was powerful. Oh, it was. Oh. It's unbelievable, but it's still saying the same things we're saying. Mm -hmm. Saying now. I could watch him all day. Mm -hmm. That was off the subject. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for I was going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it all day. <laughs> <laughs> when you the get optics, old, things go, keep going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, the optics of that speech is, is really something special to see. I don't call that. But what they're speaking to is that things have not changed no, since the 60s yep. and the civil rights yep. movement. Actually, things have, the pushback is much more. A lot harder now to push back. Because we were <coughs> really contained before. You know, if you lived in Sawyer, you were, and nothing Sawyer. could touch you. You know, <laughs> that was a safe place. And now it seems like we don't have any safe place anymore. Did you ever hear that song, The Safest Place to Live is on the Indian Reservation? <laughs> no. There's a song that, that has that lyrics in there. No, I <laughs> yeah, it goes something like this. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Everybody's just leaning. <laughs> well, if that is all of no, the questions, no, we didn't hear Dale yet. Oh. Dale, <laughs> Dale. Oh. Well, I thought I went first. Yeah. <laughs> things is, is, and I just hated this, is being told if, if I, being told that if I didn't vote, I can't complain. And then, then the, the next sentence would be, if, if you voted, then you can't complain. So, you know, the, 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 the double uh, negative of that, you know, that, that just needs the, the change. I, I, I think, um, Things have changed. Uh, you know, the the sharing that we did today um, may have been brand new in the 70s. And, and at least we're, we're, we're in a different place where we're changing the narrative. And, and it's not just, just one or two individuals having the fortitude to step in front to and, and say that in 1971 or 1968 and, and, and whatnot. Um, so uh, nothing's going to change if we don't have the discussion with, with the meaningful uh, morals and values associated with it to, to, to inspire real change. And, uh, we've been devalued and marginalized so long, we don't necessarily see the real resiliency and strength and, and things that, that we do have and this may be the time to, to share it with others. Uh, now I, I personally believe Donald Trump's presidency is, is really a great uh, a great example. <laughs> My eyebrows just shoot up. Go ahead. A great example because you know he's He's, those of you who remember when I was going into Carleton County Court and raising subject matter jurisdiction and talking about internal racism, I got patted on the head and, and said, oh, that's such a cute little argument. Racism doesn't exist. It's in your imagination. Mm -hmm. um, wow. So now the great Donald Trump has, has brought it out that it wasn't my imagination. <laughs> right. That, that, that it's there. And, uh, you know, all these nice people that have his signs in, in their yards and they're promoting, uh, they're bringing forth what we instinctively knew that, uh, you know, this is, the, this is the way it is and this is why things haven't changed. Uh, it's been shown, Donald Trump has shown it the, the light of day, what's really in many of their hearts and minds. And 
you know, I'm being facetious when I say the great. Uh, Those very fine people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that have some really bad thoughts about about us and and the people of color. So, to me, uh, you, it's much easier to bring about change when you can see what needs to, to be changed. And he's brought it to the light of day. And uh, if that doesn't motivate people, uh, the fear of what it can be left to the show. What else could he do? <laughs> yeah, right. oh, don't ask. <laughs> right, right, right. Don't. I think I, I, I said exactly what you said about a week ago to a friend of mine who's like, there is nothing good that has come from this latest pre presidency. I'm like, a lot has. I mean, we were, we had gained green and we didn't know it. <coughs> and here it is. She and waking us up for <laughs> Yeah. To what uh, Brother uh, Dale has said eloquently earlier about the invisibility of things, be made visible. Mm -hmm. You know, the racism was invisible to the majority of people in America. And we have to realize that the country was established on racial inequality, the foundation was based on that. So when we talk about, we say our prayers, and we talk about um, shaking that foundation so that the uh, institutions will fall of oppression, the so-called bastions of oppression, those institutions that will fall so that the people can have true that equality. Those are things that we have to realize. They don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to know the history. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm glad to listen and hear live firsthand. And we have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Bringing that, making it visible. Mm -hmm. West Martin. Oh, that's such a cute <laughs> argument. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fire and flame. <laughs> So, no, 20 years later, I was right. <laughs> yeah. So You're ahead I, of your time. <laughs> so when we get to this point, when we talk about this part, we have to ask ourselves, okay, when we get here, then what do we do? Do we have somebody that, that we have in mind when we talk about, you know, bringing up other leaders and, and ask, you know, and, and talking to our youth about, who wants to, who wants to help, who wants to step up. And I know that when we talk, well, I don't know, but I hope that when we talked about that, everybody had a couple people that popped into their head. Mm -hmm. So I would love it if, if we could write down who we thought of and, and maybe think, you know, I, or, or take that action, because we're not just thinking, but we're taking an action you know, to reach out to them and, and say, you know, I thought of you when this happened, you know, and, and take in an actual physical action to, to let them know that we do think that they have what it takes, that they have that, that fire, that coal inside them that we see, because I, and, and like, again, I hope we all had somebody in our heads that said, yeah, that is a leader. They do have that little piece. And all you have to do is add that add that wood to it and build that fire up for the next leaders. So I would I would love for you all to think about that person, you know, or those people and do that. Is that something that you can do? I would think we'd have to have um, control over the institution of education. And if we don't have control over that so-called Indian education, that we need to develop an institution that uh, educates our next generation and younger ones. That we have total control, community control, where we utilize all those knowledges. 
intergenerational knowledge, all those other knowledges. We utilize those because even the, um, the Ojibwe school is being led. And when we talk about contemporary knowledge, there is also miseducation that is out there. So we got to take control of that and, and really, it's, it's our responsibility. There's, there's nations of people, Islamic nations of people that have come to mind uh, in, in America that says we need to do it for ourselves. Um, we can't depend upon anybody else to do those things for us. We need to develop our own institutions and do those things for ourselves. And then when we say, when we look at what is underlying, what's keeping us oppressed, I think that's a key piece, is that we're not totally in control of educating our young people. Because you see um, yeah. them taken from us, mm -hmm. taken from our communities and things. And then a salient feature of any, com any society is who is honored, who is put up there and who is honored. So if we're going to say then we... This, this uh, Anishinaabe is the one that we hold up in honor. Are we as a community doing that, or is the, the, the man-made ones doing that for us? Is it genuine? You know, I think that uh, we have to ask ourselves some deep questions as we go along. Are we a part of the problem? Are we a part of the solution? We seek out those ones that can help us. <clears throat>